In the last edition of Spotlight, we brought you news of Quicksilver and the forthcoming plans to break the world water speed record. Nigel McKnight, the driver of the boat, came into the university to give us the latest from the project team. The project's progressing very well. It's always hard work with this kind of venture. Uh, minimal sponsorship, finance, a voluntary group uh, relying on companies and uh, academic uh, with Salford University, people who can contribute something to what we're doing. But I'd say overall we're very, very positive about what we're doing and we're, 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 I'm very encouraged by the progress. The project headquarters for the Quicksilver team is actually at Nottingham East Midlands Airport and that was selected because it is very central within uh, the United Kingdom. It's just about half a mile from the M1 motorway so it's good for tra transportation, people getting in and out and it is very central. But the team members are actually all over the country and the facilities that we use and the different players that help us, including Salford, are obviously places that are widely dispersed around the country but the nucleus of the project is actually down at Nottingham. There are two elements to the work that we've been doing on the Quicksilver Water Speed Record project. One of them is research, the finalising the design of the boat, the conceptual design, uh, knowing that we've got the right shape. And then the second part is actually building the thing for real. And we're doing both in parallel now. We've reached a stage of the project where we're more or less completing our proof of concept and design work. And we're heavily uh, involved in the manufacture of the boat. And um, construction is well advanced down at um, East Midlands Airport near Nottingham. The next stage for this project is to complete the wind tunnel work that we're now doing today. Um, possibly a little bit more aerodynamic research conducted with computers as opposed to a wind tunnel model and we hope we can do that with University of Salford starting uh, January uh, 09. Um, but meanwhile, uh, back at base down at Nottingham, we're continuing um, with a great passion completing the construction of the boat, although we still think it'll be another at least a year before construction is completed. So we have a lot of work on our plate at the moment. The design of Quicksilver has been a very long and laborious uh, job, far longer than we thought. It's gone on for many, many years. We've tried several different shapes in the wind tunnel over the years and developed and modified and changed. And um, we eventually came up with a, a final design, but most of the original work was done uh, with me working with a gentleman called Ken Norris. And Ken was very famous as the designer of Donald Campbell's Bluebird Cars and Boats. And sadly, Ken passed away three years ago, but we've carried on the work uh, since Ken passed away. And we now have a final design that we're gonna, we're gonna feel confident enough to actually complete the construction of and run it. The University of Salford has been a key player for the last two years. Um, we very much rely on having support not only from companies and private individuals but also an academic dimension to the project. Uh, here at Salford there's a fantastic wind tunnel. Um, we are able to work with that wind tunnel and with people who understand it and uh, the um, student involvement that we've had, the undergraduate involvement has been of a very high caliber. So we, we know that we're working with good people, we have a good facility and we've really benefited from that and the role played by Salford uh, is a unique role in the project. We don't have anybody, uh, any other player that's remotely duplicating what Salford does. It's a unique player in the scheme of this uh, British bid for the world water speed record. There's um, a question that people ask about, the, the big question, when? Uh, when do you actually get the work finished and go for the record? and it's still a little bit open-ended open -ended. I would imagine it could easily be another two years um, it could easily be a year and a half before we have the boat on the water and we're going to want to do trials and that could take up to six months to um, perfect the shape of the boat on the water so in all honesty I think it could be two years before we're actually able to go for the record there's only one location in the whole of the British Isles where we're actually allowed to make an attempt on the world water speed record and that is Coniston Water in the Lake District. It's enshrined in the bylaws of the Lake District National Park Authority. The record attempts can take place uh, on Coniston Water, and this goes right back to the days of Donald Campbell and his father, Sir Malcolm Campbell, with the Bluebirds. And so um, it is a long stretch of water. It's just about long enough at five and a half miles for us to achieve our target speed of um, 330 miles an hour. <laughs>